on AM650 KGAB. And good morning. What's shaping up to be a real fine day here in the capital city. 61 is your current temperature. Looking at a high today of 76 thunderstorms possibly this afternoon. But I'll tell you what, uh, as long as we don't get any flooding, I think we're fine. Especially some of you that just mowed the lawn. Uh, lawns are looking nice, plush and green. So maybe we'll keep them that way. Well, it is time for our next guest. Uh, he is a uh, economist, Ph.D., and uh, also uh, talks a lot about Wyoming economy as well as the country's economy as a whole. And I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Sven Larson. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Good, thank you. Good that, to be back. That's good. It's good to be back. Also, we have the uh, webcam on this morning, so if you want to head on out to YouTube and uh, go right on out there to AM650 KGAB, you can do so as well. So uh, we had been talking a little bit about the Wyoming economy here in the past, but uh, this morning we want to talk a little bit about reopening the case for a balanced budget amendment. So uh, evidently this has been a closed case. Is there some buzz going on in Washington that they want to reopen this again? Now kind of tell us about it. Yeah, it's interesting. The um, uh, the GOP has, for the first time in I don't know how many years, actually presented a budget with a fiscal plan that will balance the Fed in nine years. And um, uh, they're doing this by making certain spending cuts and some tax reforms. Uh, and that is good. It's good that for the first time in such a long time that that is actually happening. The problem is that they... Um, they're relying on some cuts that will not last forever, so to speak. Um, Such as? Um, I um, would prefer not to go into that. I have uh, heard some inside information, but it's coming out okay. later. But um, the, the important point here is that uh, the budget relies on the Republicans winning every election from now through 2024. <laughs> And I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we need a stronger guarantee for a balanced budget amendment um, that is um, s sort of elevated above uh, the parties. And that would be a balanced budget amendment. And uh, I was in Washington recently and had some meetings on, on Capitol Hill. And what I heard from a lot of people there is, growing interest in this. There is a resolution, concurrent resolution in the House, House Concurrent Resolution 26, supported by uh, Representative Gold, a debt control amendment, an amendment that puts a cap on debt. Uh, so that you can Congress cannot raise the debt without consent of the states. And this is an interesting approach um, invented by the Compact for America, which uh, I'm a member of the uh, Council of Scholars there. Um, and the Senate so far has not moved on this. Uh, our senators here from, from Wyoming has not said anything about it. And I think it's about time that they do this because the real threat to, to our fiscal future and to our future as a prosperous nation is that the Democrats have presented, or at least the White House has presented a budget that continues the same deficits for the next 10 years. The Obama budget wants to borrow, get this, 11 cents of every dollar they spend for the next 10 years. They want to add, get this, $4.7 trillion dollars to the national debt. So there's no value in our dollar when we do that. I mean, exactly. it's tanked. It's tanked. Exactly. And that's why we're paying so much money for very little. And at what point do we get the trend to stop? And, and really historically going back, at what point did people become uninterested in wanting to balance a budget and why? Gary, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. If we follow the Obama budget and what the Democrats want, in eight short years, the interest on our national debt is going to be bigger than our national defense budget. If the, and that's at the low interest rates we have now. If the interest rate just doubles, which is still below 5%, we're going to pay more in interest on our national debt in eight years than we pay in social security. We cannot have this go on. The GOP has come up with a budget that uh, moves us a little bit closer. But I don't trust the GOP with 
either winning every election, that means congressional election and presidential election from now through 2024, or even sticking to a budget like this. I mean, you know politicians better than I do. When they see an opportunity um, to win an election by giving some short-term promise that, oh, I'm going to spend a little bit more money on this, I'm going to bring some pork spending home on this, they can walk away from a long-term commitment. We need a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. And the, the, the Compact for America model that Cynthia Lummis supports um, or has expressed support for uh, is uh, re it would work. Let's say we have a debt limit of $19 trillion. And reached it but they're approaching it they see that within say the next year we're going to have to to raise the debt limit what they do is then send out basically send out a call to the states and ask hey guys can you sign on uh, uh, an increase in in the debt limit and then the 50 states uh, an opportunity to sit down each each and every one of them and decide do we want to do we want to approve this or not and if a majority of the states say, no, we're not going to approve a debt limit increase, then there will be no debt in limit increase. Then Congress will have to come up with spending cuts. And uh, this is a new approach to a balanced budget amendment. There have been about a dozen different proposals for balanced budget amendments over the past um, 35, 40 years. This is uh, only the second one that targets the, the debt instead of the deficit. And imagine that. Imagine if we could sit down at the state capitol and the governor could sit down, our legislators at the state capitol and the governor could sit down and have a discussion. Do we think that Washington is running their uh, uh, finances the right way? Do we think that they deserve to have the debt limit increased? That would bring the entire issue of the national debt a whole lot closer to us as voters. Absolutely. Because then we could go up to the governor, we could go up to the state capitol, and we could say, no, we don't think you should vote for this. And um, and I think this this would bring not only the issue of the the, the, the federal budget, technically, to, to, to closer to people, but I also think it would make people start thinking, what are we actually doing with our money? What are we, what is this big government doing for us? Um, we could, for example, yeah, I, I believe it would open a discussion about um, all these entitlement programs we have that the federal government is sponsoring, that the states are running. You got Medicaid, you got education money, transportation, um, money going in for all sorts of um, minor welfare, um, food stamps. It would open a discussion about that and say, uh, is this what we're borrowing money to spend on? Um, and we could sit down and have a discussion here in Wyoming and say, well, we might approve it if you, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you come up with a plan uh, for how to reduce these big programs so they don't cost as much in the future. See, the problem, the, the reason why we're having this debt crisis is that our politicians, our elected officials in Washington have made all these promises. Uh, uh, that they don't have money for. You, you know how it works. They come up with a good idea. They're sitting around in Congress saying, I, I want to win the next election and we want to, you know, we, we want to boost our party's influence. So they come up with new entitlement programs that they want to want to spend money on. They come up with uh, all kinds of um, expansions of existing programs and then they pass them. Well, and also they're obligated to uh, some of the big oil companies and some of these big corporations that have helped to sponsor their re-election bids. And so there's obligation in that angle. Also, if the governor decides not to support it, could there be some in the hiding that say, okay, we're just going to pull your federal funding, which evidently we rely on because we can't get rid of some of the programs in Wyoming common core and some of these others because of the federal funding that comes along with it so it almost seems like it could potentially be a chokehold 823 is the time uh, we are with uh, dr sven larson here this morning economist and we're talking about reopening the case for a balanced budget amendment here in the country to try to bring some of that national debt down and avoid borrowing more money your money 
uh, that's going to be affected by that. We'll take some of your phone calls if you'd like to weigh in at 632-6500 or 632-3323. More from Sven Larson straight ahead. Good morning. This is Arlen Walter at Cheyenne Hearing Clinic. Digital technology and hearing aids has advanced significantly in the last 24 months. For instance, if a patient is wearing hearing aids dispensed at my clinic and they call me from any place in the world, I can adjust their aids over the phone. In the Believe It or Not category, some new aids have more computer memory than all of the computers aboard the Apollo mission that went to the moon. And some aids can be put in a glass of water for five minutes and when taken out, will function fine. Call 635-0435 or online at Cheyenne Hearing Clinic dot com rev them up cheyenne belt sander racing returns june 10th to capital lumber in cheyenne who's got the biggest the baddest belt sander in town is it you dust off that old sander and let's lay some wood on the 35 foot belt sander drag strip at capital lumber on june 10th prizes awarded for first second and third place and for the most creative belt sander Check them out on Facebook or stop by 1222 Dunn Avenue to register. One in nine babies will be born prematurely, needing the specialized care of a neonatal ICU. Toby's Shower for Babies knows that new parents appreciate any kindness during this stressful time. That's why they donate baskets to the Level 4 NICU in Denver, the closest destination for preemies in the region. The baskets contain blankets, books, a stuffed animal, onesies, and more. They brighten up the room as well as mom and dad's spirits. You can help by donating to this caring organization. Visit showerforbabies.org or find them on Facebook. And now, more KGAB Mornings with Gary Freeman on AM650 KGAB. Good morning, 825 is the time. My name is Gary Freeman. We are in studio this morning with Sven Larson. And uh, we're talking about the economy of the United States and how that affects Wyoming. And you know, Sven, uh, underneath this proposal, for a balanced budget amendment, uh, and especially if the states are going to be able to weigh in and then not be able to choke hold with some of these federal dollar strings attached, it's going to take a lot of leadership, not only amongst governors in the state, but it's going to take a lot of leadership of people in Congress. And frankly, uh, people in Congress just haven't proven that they're strong enough leaders to be able to fight the tide and to move forward anyway. Your thoughts on that? Well, the the, the way the compact be, uh, balanced budget amendment works is that the process works is that uh, once the uh, once um, the federal government runs up against its debt limit and needs to ask the states to to approve a, an increase, they cannot bribe the states with more federal funds, and they cannot threaten the states. That we're going to take away your money. That is how the compact is, is is structured. It's written. Once it becomes an amendment, it's going to be unconstitutional for the federal government to do that. So, so that's kind of one lock. But the problem is bigger than that, as you point out. Over time, over a longer period of time, Congress could tell the states that the first thing that's going to go away if you if you do not approve of a a uh, an increase in the debt limit is your federal funds for Medicaid. And what you're going to do then? Uh, and I think. But I think that is actually an opportunity to start a conversation here in Wyoming. Do we really want to be this dependent on the federal government? Do we think that the federal government should come in with its money, dictate how we teach our kids in our schools, how we run our welfare systems, how we we um, um, uh, take care of our highways, or 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 even run Medicaid? And I, and and see, and that and that is uh, part of the dirty little secret that we you know. And this is a great civic lesson and a lesson in national state economics as well, in my opinion is the fact that I don't think the states were ever set up to receive all this federal money from the federal government. And now we're starting to look at this and go, wow, we have a governor that with open arms welcomes federal monies. Of course, everybody always has a reason. The special interests in the state always have a reason why they've got to have those federal dollars. But now we're finding if they're going to use it for leverage or as a carrot, Hanging, hanging off a stick and saying, if you don't, this will happen, or if you do vote a certain way or whatever, this will happen, uh, it kind of puts the states up against the ropes unless they have strong leadership and a strong economy to be able to tell the federal government, take your money and stuff it. Exactly. Exactly. And and, and it, it brings up the, the issue of state sovereignty and brings us back to what how this country was founded. But I have a very innovative idea on how to actually 
um, uh, change the, 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 our relationship to the federal government. And we'll get back to that after the next break. You bet. We will. We will. We're talking with Dr. Sven Larson this morning. Uh, if you want to be a part of the program, 632-6500, 632-3323, a very important discussion that we're having here this morning, um, talking about reopening the case for a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. As in March, 14 members of the House saw just that and took action with Representative Gozar of Arizona at the helm. They submitted House Concurrent Resolution 26 in support of a new innovative form of balanced budget amendments called the Compact BBA, which shifts focus from the deficit to the debt. We'll talk more with Dr. Sven Larson and take your phone calls straight ahead. This is KGAB Mornings. My name is Gary Freeman. Fox News up next. AM 650 KGAB, up to the minute news. From the KGAB News Center, I'm Doug Randall. Wyoming Secretary of State Ed Murray says he thinks it's important to have state money reinvested in Wyoming as much as possible. When you consider that uh, Wyoming has an enormous uh, wealth, relatively speaking, that is otherwise uh, considerably invested in stocks or bonds or instruments that have nothing to do with Wyoming. Murray's one of five statewide elected officials who sit on the Loan and Investment Board. A judge has ruled there's enough evidence for a case to move forward against a Casper man involved in a two-vehicle crash south of Gillette that killed his passenger. Kevin Coyle has the Lynn story. Lynn Popple's case was bound over to district court last Wednesday. He's due in court later this week on a charge of aggravated vehicular homicide. Investigators say Popple was headed south on Wyoming State Highway 50 when his Jeep went off the road in early February. He overcorrected, veered across the highway, and crashed into an oncoming pickup truck. A passenger in Popple's Jeep, 30 two-year-old Alfred Banda of Sheridan died at the scene. According to an affidavit, witnesses say Popple appeared to be looking down while driving. Investigators say a blood test revealed he was under the influence of amphetamines and cannabinoids. Reporting from Casper, I'm Kevin Coyle. Nine states are stepping into a lawsuit over the Utah Prairie Dog in favor of a ruling that animal activists say threatens to undermine the Endangered Species Act. The attorneys general asked an appeals court last week to uphold a ruling striking down federal protections for the Utah prairie dog and private property. They argue states should manage animals that live only within their borders. But federal attorneys counter that most protected species live only in a single state, and court, a single state rather, and courts have long upheld federal authority to manage them. They are appealing a ruling from U.S. District Judge D. Benson, who sided with Utah residents, who said prairie dogs were overtaking their town. Thursday's friend of the court brief was signed by attorneys general from Wyoming and several other western states. More news on demand at KGAB.com. All right, thanks a lot, Doug. 8.33 is the time. Time to turn it over to John Gabrielson, or actually Kevin Coyle this morning, in for John Gabrielson with your Wyo Prep Sports. 
Welcome to the WildPreps.com radio report for a Monday. I'm Kevin Coyle. Once we hit state, we were just a whole nother beast to deal with. I mean, teams didn't know what was going on. They started to find the net. It's the product of it. We just didn't know how to lose in state. It was it's amazing. I, I, I can't describe it. Lost for words. That was Tayton Montgomery of the Cheyenne Central Boys soccer team moments after the Indians trounced crosstown rival Cheyenne East 5-1 to one in the 4A state championship game on Saturday. On the season, the team got off to a bad start, going 0-4 to begin conference play, and then put together a five-game win streak before getting tripped up just before and during the regional tournament. Montgomery says that was a wake-up call. It kind of helped know that we were still mortal. I mean, we were on a five-win streak at that point, and Maybe our heads were a little too high, and so it kind of helped us, I mean, to get kicked in the back a little bit. He adds that his team became more motivated just before their first-round state tournament game when they saw the number one seed lose. Actually, before we played, we saw Gillette go down, so we were like, wow, well, that's who we just lost to regional, so now that they're out of the way, I mean, we have a shot. So we have to get past this game and then play Rock Springs, just, you know, see what happens, and Everything's just fell in our way. Montgomery scored two goals, and Blaine Kelly scored twice himself in the state championship game. I'll be back with more in a moment. No matter what your level of hearing loss or speech disability, Wyoming Relay can help. Wyoming Relay is a free service that offers telephone services and specialized equipment, so you can call anyone, anytime, anywhere. Wyoming Relay provides telephone access for people with hearing loss or people with speech disabilities. Wyoming Relay, a call anyone can make. Just dial 711 or go to wyomingrelay.com. Another smart resource from Wyoming Workforce Services. And that's the ball game. The Warriors pick up a good win today, but the game isn't over. Let's see if they all make it home safe. The first player slides into the passenger seat and reaches for the seatbelt. Two other players are roughhousing in the back seat. Mom is already buckled in in the driver's seat. She shoots them a stern look in the rearview mirror, and that's all it took. Both players buckled themselves in. Remember, the game is not over until everyone makes it home safe. Buckle up every passenger, every trip, every time. Paid for with federal highway safety funds. In the 4A Girls Soccer State Championship game, Carly Thompson scored the lone goal as Cheyenne East with three-peat as state champs, with the last two coming at the expense of Sheridan. We'll hear from the Lady Thunderbirds tomorrow. Not only is Cheyenne soccer title town, but so is Jackson. The Bronx boys would shut out Worland 4-0 to repeat as 3A boys state champs and win their third title in the last four years. And the Jackson Lady Bronx beat Star Valley 1-0 in the 3A girls state championship game to win their sixth title in the last eight years. This has been your Daily Prep Report. For more on Wyoming High School sports, log on to wildpreps.com. A pleasant and a very good morning, Cheyenne. Well, the warmer temperatures that developed over the weekend will continue for the start of this week. Today will be quite similar to yesterday. Warm with 70s to near 80 degrees under partly cloudy skies by afternoon and evening. Like yesterday, showers and thunderstorms will be popping up over southeast Wyoming. We'll see a drop in thunderstorm coverage Tuesday. Temperatures stay warm, near 80. Then we'll be a little cooler, lower to mid-70s for the second half of the week with late-day thunderstorm chances returning Wednesday through Friday. Acquiring a taste for it is easy. Asking someone else to buy it is easy. Sneaking a bottle from your liquor cabinet is easy. Getting a fake ID, easy. So is finding an unsupervised party. So is making sure that, as my parents, you never know. For all the things that are easy about underage drinking, talking to your children about it may not seem like one of them. But it's not as hard as you may think. I'm Carol Mead, Wyoming's First Lady. Children who feel close to their parents are far less likely to drink underage. And the sooner you start the conversation, the better they'll be at knowing what to do when someone offers them alcohol. To learn valuable tips on how to talk to your children about underage drinking, Visit talkearlyandoften.org. Easy. Easy. That's easy. A message from the Wyoming Department of Health and Prevention Management Organization. Partly to mostly cloudy skies today. Daytime temperature readings will be near 80 with afternoon and evening scattered showers and thunderstorms. A pretty good bet. Lows tonight, low to mid 50s. Sunny Tuesday. Highs near 80, near 50 Tuesday night, a little bit cooler, partly cloudy, low to mid 70s for Wednesday and Thursday. For Wednesday and Thursday, scattered afternoon showers and thunderstorms possible. I'm meteorologist Don Day with more weather on demand at KGAB.com. 
Renew, reuse, and recycle with Meals on Wheels Merchandise Mart. They showcase slightly used furniture, appliances, home decor, electronics, and more. Plus, all proceeds go to help the elderly and homebound in need of meals. Come shop or drop off items at Meals on Wheels, 2015 South Greeley Highway. Dixie Roberts of Ameriprise Financial Services on being a member of Cheyenne Lee. The success of Cheyenne being a viable and healthy community can be tied directly to the expertise and long history of Leeds. It's every single person in the community. Not everyone is a member, but it takes every single person in the community to make Leeds successful. And when we're talking about Leeds, it's not one person or two people. It's a lot of businesses, a lot of individuals, a lot of nonprofits that have put together this organization. Be a part of the progress and join online today at CheyenneLeeds.org. KGAB Mornings with Gary Freeman and Doug Randall. News, weather, sports, information, and opinion. Everything you need to start your day on AM 650 KGAB. All right, 840 is the time. My name is Gary Freeman. Good morning. The sun is out, and I'll tell you what, uh, it's going to be a, it's a great day already today, and I know Mondays can be a little bit of a drag, but as I always like to say, you got to have a Monday before you can have a Friday, and it's an opportunity to make some more money. If you're working, if you're retired, you've already got all the money, so it doesn't matter anyway. We're on with uh, Dr. Sven Larson this morning. been talking about uh, reopening the case for a balanced budget, which is much needed here in the country. But uh, Sven, you were kind of bringing another angle at it, that with this new amendment, it looks like they're going to try to get the states involved as kind of an up or down vote of, of approval or disapproval and how that may affect things throughout the country. And seems to be a good idea on paper, but you and I started to dissect maybe some of the problems that it might run into as well. Uh, exactly. We, we have one problem is that the states get about $550, $560 billion a year from the federal government for all these uh, uh, uh innumerable programs i didn't know the uh, federal government had any money at all to be given <laughs> out but anyway we digress yeah they're um, uh, as i mentioned before they're we're borrowing about 11 to 12 cents of every dollar spent even more than that but um uh, remember what ronald reagan said it wasn't the federal government that created the states it was the states that created the federal government mm -hmm. let's make that a fiscal reality as well. Look at all the personal federal uh, um, um, income taxes we're paying, all the money we're sending to Washington, D.C., even in a state like this that doesn't have any state income tax. What if we took all that money, we kept it, and um, used whatever we needed for our state needs and then sent the residual to Washington. As it works now, we send all the money over to Washington, D.C., and they send it back. My favorite example is uh, the special milk program for, for uh, milk in, in schools. Uh, when, when my daughter goes to school, if she wants milk in the school, here's how it works. The federal government takes money out of my paycheck. It's sent from the department to the Department of Treasury from my employer. The Department of Treasury sends the money to the Department of Agriculture. The Department of Agriculture sends it down to one of their, their offices, which sends the money back to the state, which sends it out to the school district, which sends it to the school so they can buy milk. Now, wouldn't it be easier if I could just take the damn money, pardon my French, and give it to my daughter so she could buy milk at school? So sure it would. <laughs> well, and then all, all, all the people you have to pay for that bureaucracy, all their health benefits, all their retirement, just to get money to your daughter for and, a crazy little quart of milk. <laughs> and they're not... Uh, or a being, pint, whatever. I mean, the, 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 they're, not, they're not being paid... Uh, uh, um, uh, on a stingy scale, they're making pretty good money. Those uh, bureaucrats. So, so what if we what if we reversed the relationship between the states and the federal government? Let the states send money, whatever money we think the the the, the federal government needs. Now you know that ain't government. happening. That that's not going to happen because, like, well, we think you only need a couple of grand, and they can't function off that. So. I understand your idea, but now put that into reality, how that would actually work. I don't think it will. Um, I'm not so pessimistic because I think what the states would do then is they would say, wait a second, we can take care of ourselves of our schools. We can take care of uh, whatever health care we need government to do and let the private sector do the rest. We can run our welfare systems the way we want. 
Um, we're perfectly capable of taking care of our highways. What do we need the federal government for? National defense. And then you come up with a reasonable, reasonable amount of money you send to Washington to deal with that. That is, that is the true federalist, the, 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 the old fashioned federalist, the genuine model for how the federal government should relate to the states. Uh, and, and I think this is actually entirely doable if we start looking at not the not we we don't have to rewrite many. Uh, I mean, it's not a matter of outside of adding a balanced budget amendment to the constitution. It's not a whole lot of other things we need to do. Um, all we need to do essentially to make this work uh, is to make sure that the states get to keep the money that we now send to to the federal government as income taxes. Mm -hmm. And we could start from that. So who would have to pass that to make that a reality? Well, in, in, in all honesty, of course, Congress would have to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and they don't like to, to see money go. I mean, man, George Bush took a bunch of hits when he wanted us to take or wanted to allow us to take 2% of our Social Security and invest it in it of our own. And Ted Kennedy wouldn't have it. But I think we can change the conversation. All right. Well, speaking of conversation, let's take a phone call. Good morning. You're on with Sven Larson. It's your turn. Yes, I, so I think we need to look back at the 1917 amendment where they took the senators being appointed by the states and being voted on by the people. What that has done is put money, big money, into each Senate campaign. You have to have big money. Therefore, the people are controlling the issues now, if you would, the kind of is the big money that does the best advertisement for the election of it of the senator. If the senators were still appointed by the by the state senators and legislatures, the people could go to the senators, the local senators. My senator happens to be Tony Ross. I can go to Tony Ross and see him just about any day of the week. It is very difficult for me to have a telephone conversation with our senators. So I think we we need to look at what is the in, unintended consequences of having voters pick up the senators. I think that would bring back more control to the states. That's where we really lost the control. That's what I, my comment. Hey, Thank thanks you. for the comment. Uh, great, great. Um, definitely historically, a lot of people are wishing we'd go back to the way things were, as he just said. Uh, it's interesting. The German constitution uh, that we helped right after World War II actually had the upper chamber appointed, uh, the members of the upper chamber appointed by 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 the states in West Germany, and and uh, obviously that used to be the model we had here. I think the the caller has a very good point. Uh, what would happen then is that the um, the state legislature would uh, uh, tie the fiscal relations between the state and the federal government into the appointment and hold these uh, um, uh, senators accountable. As it is now when you, as the caller pointed out, when you elect somebody to the United States Senate, they essentially become the federal government's representatives in our state. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not being entirely fair to, to Mike Enzi and, and, and Barrasso because I think they're Compared to many other senators, I think they're pretty good. Nevertheless, if you look at how they think, how they go about their legislative business, it is a whole lot more about national affairs uh, uh, and how they affect the state other than the other way around, which is the way it should be. So this is a good idea. The, another amendment is, of course, the one that allows the the um, uh, federal government to collect income taxes. Um, I, I don't think, I'm, I'm not a constitutional expert, obviously. I think that a lot of the, the, the relations between the state and the federal government has to do with money more than, than what is written uh, uh, in the constitution, unfortunately, but that is the way it works. So let's start with changing those relationships. All right, we are talking with Dr. Sven Larson, who is self-admitted. He is not a constitutional expert, but Sven, we have plenty in this audience who are absolutely constitutional experts. You just ask them and they will tell you so. All right. Having a little fun this morning. 848 this morning. We'll take a break and we'll wrap it up with Dr. Sven Larson. Good morning. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? 
You got a king? Go, fish that. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. B&B Appliance and TV has been your hometown Frigidaire appliance and service store for 46 years. When you purchase a Frigidaire appliance from B&B, you're getting their local service department as well as a great price. Their factory trained service technicians live and work here. And with their huge parts department, they can provide faster solutions to your repair issues. See the full lineup of Frigidaire Gallery Appliances at B&B Appliance and TV, 714 Central Avenue. What's price less than Civic, Corolla, or Focus? How about the 2015 Kia Forte? AJ Miller for Kia of Cheyenne, and the 2015 Kia Forte gets great fuel economy, has impressive interior space and available features, yet starts under $16,000. With Kia Forte, you can get options like sunroof, ventilated driver's seat, and heated steering, making it easy to be comfortable. Every new Kia comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Come by or go to kiaofcheyenne.com, or we'll always beat any deal on any new Kia in any state. And now, back to KGAB Mornings with Gary Freeman on AM650 KGAB. And good morning, 850 is the time. Coming up on the hill, the Sean Hannity Morning Minute. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, the weather is just absolutely out of sight. Dynamite, as uh, Jimmy Walker, JJ from uh, Good Times would say. Right now, your current temperature is already 67. 76 is going to be the high today. And uh, if you want to be on the program this morning with uh, Dr. Sven Larson, uh, economist here you certainly may and we have a caller right now good morning you're on with dr larson good morning this is joe and Laramie. hi joe hi when uh Sven was on there's a million questions the guy is so good at what he does the last caller hit one of my questions on that about the senators i'm going to jump to a different one uh Sven larson during the last uh, legislature uh um you know he said that he questioned some claims about all the hospitals needing money. And I know that since then, there's all sorts of different hospitals that are announcing they're opening, uh, they're expanding. Uh, it would sound like if the industry of medicine was in such bad shape that nobody was making money, nobody would be opening hospitals. Has he gotten any insight into the, the substance of these claims or that they said the hospitals were losing, I don't know, it was $10 million or $50 million a year. Yeah, that, that's a great question to bring up, and I, I I've made the same observation as as you have that uh, Joe that uh, the, there are ex there's um, an expansion in the medical industry here in the state. Uh, all I can tell you is that um, uh, when I and other um, others have asked the hospital association and others to to verify their claims that they need so and so many tens of millions of dollars they have never been able to provide any substance behind the numbers so and that was one of senator charlie scott's issues with exactly. it exactly not that all the hospitals weren't reporting good numbers but evidently there was question that some were not right so, exactly yeah it could, it could be just really bad management hiding behind this uh, this constant, you know, uh, chatter about the rising cost of medical, which is, is rising. I mean, what's making it rise? But also, you may just have a very poorly administrated uh, organization, be it a hospital or an automotive manufacturer. What, what, I, what I think, Joe, is uh, I, I think you have a point. Uh, I also think um, there it may not be that the leaderships or, or, or the managements of, of the hospitals themselves are or, or uh, mishandling the issue. I think there are, to be perfectly honest, there are lobbyists and representatives of, of interest groups, special interests, uh, trying to lobby for more money here, uh, who are above the hospitals. Um, I, as a, I mean, I, I'm a scholar, I, I, I'm a researcher, I um, uh, let the numbers and good analysis always uh, uh, have the last say. Uh, and if somebody presents me with an argument that is that is better than mine, I change my mind. If they come up with a, an argument that is worse than mine, I stand by my opinion. And what I said back during the, the session, I stand by that. And uh, until somebody, I, I'm not even going to dig into the issue until they come up some, at least something 
to substantiate the claim that the hospitals are not doing well. Some of the hospitals are not doing well here. So, so I think you bring up a very good point, and I think we should keep holding our state legislators' uh, feet to the fire on this issue. Yeah, I mean, so when, when an organization is requesting more taxpayer dollars, is there nothing that compels them to open up the books or to present whatever uh, credible story it would require to say, yeah, you've got a point, you're doing a great job, you're as efficient as can be, and because of all these reasons outside of your control, uh, you know, you, you can't make money and you're, you know, very valuable. Is there nothing that compels these people, these organizations, to give the data that's required? Thanks for the phone call, Joe. Go ahead, Sven. Uh, that would be uh, Joe, Gary, me and everybody else who is uh, uh, looking at what the legislators are doing from the outside. We are the ones who have to demand that they actually substantiate their claims when they want more of our money. All right. Any final thoughts uh, this morning, Sven, that you we should be chewing on as uh, you leave the doors of KGAV this morning? Because we're getting ready to get cut off by Sean Hannity. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's important that we, we always, uh, I, I know these issues about a, uh, the economy and, and, and budgets and all that, not a lot of people get excited about it, but it's nevertheless our hard earned money that our politicians are spending. And it's it, it, when it comes to the federal debt, let's keep in mind that the more we let it grow, the more our kids will have to spend on paying for our entitlements instead of their own future and their own uh, um, personal finances. So this is an intergenerational responsibility just as much as it is a, a, an acute fiscal issue. And I would say that my seven-year-old daughter's uh, children and or even grandchildren right now are already stuck with the debt. Uh, that's how far out it is now. Children yes. that aren't even born are going to be stuck with this. And so these are very important decisions, very important changes that must needs be made at this time in our lives. Absolutely. All right, Sven, if we want to get in contact with you some more or check out your readings, how can we do that, sir? Republic Free Choice uh, um, is always the place to go. Um, I have a new blog called americasfiscalfuture.com where I discuss especially the, the balanced budget issue, americasfiscalfuture.com. Uh, and um, you can always... Um, uh, as I said, go to republicfreechoice.org. What about, what is it called? The foghorn or something like that? The blow, <laughs> bullhorn? The Liberty Bullhorn. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my my default uh, blog. But America's Fiscal Future is the one that specifically deals with the balanced budget amendment okay. issue. Okay, very good. We appreciate you keeping your eye on that, making your monthly visit. It's great content. And, and actually, you know, it's dealing with state sovereignty, our country sovereignty, our pocketbook, our own sovereignty for that matter and uh, not just being pawns in the hand of the federal government. This is really good stuff. Thank you. Next time, I'm going to talk a little bit more about exactly how to change the fiscal relations between the state and the federal government. I'm going to come up with a model for it. That would be great, because when you put tools in the hands of the people, then they can take those tools and put their hand to the plow and start working, right? All right. Thanks a lot, Sven. You have a great week, and uh, thanks for all the great phone calls, uh, questions. Really, really good. 8.56 your time. My name is Gary Freeman, and uh, we'll have some open line time at 9 o'clock this morning, talk about some of the things going on around town. I don't know, have you given much thought about where the city's going to get the $125,000 for the security guards for the uh, Jack Spiker parking garage downtown? And uh, any other issues you might have, and of course, we'll highlight you on the news of the day. My name is Gary Freeman, KGAV Mornings on Cheyenne's number one news talk radio station, AM 650 KGAB and KGAB.com. Good morning.